Okay, I have an Asset Twin 6000 with uh, gin spools on top. To kind of round things out, um, for the 6000 I've done with barrel spools, that was the, the twin exclusive. I did the two V10s, both with gins and barrels, and I've done the combi, so this is kind of rounding out. I mean, I know there's the maximum and the uh, and the pro and all those things, but they're, they're similar to these. The only other one that's really different, I would say, is like the Ruko Grant Plus, which is kind of the style, so maybe I'll do one of those. Um, but in any case, um, I don't know if I show this, it has six top pins that have uh, gin spool drivers that are all going into matching counter milling in the plug, and these five sidebar pins that have um, false gates on them. Uh, I haven't gutted this yet, so I'm just assuming everything's correct in there, uh, but we'll see, because I'll gut it if I get it open. Um, for the first part, I won't go into too much detail. You're basically feeling for a binding pin and just you know, pushing it up. Your goal here is to get either the gin set or into the counter milling so that you get a, a false set. Once you get the false set, you can start working on the side pins. So, I mean, there's not too much to say here to get your false set. You're just feeling for the binding pin. And when you feel a binding pin, you push on it. I don't know if this one's binding. Oh, okay. Okay. You push on it until we get a nice false set going on. This first pin's really high, which is always really annoying in these locks. If the first pin is high, it makes it pretty tough to get your pick to go up. Right now I'm just looking for another binder. Not feeling anything. Shouldn't be this hard to get a false set. This is not a good omen. Not sure why it's so hard to get a false set. Unless I just didn't feel it. Well, Sidebar pins are binding, so maybe I did get the false set and I just didn't feel it. That's a bit worrisome. Anyhow, um, going on to the side, um, I can feel some binding, and it's a little hard to get out of these. And rather than just rely on the, you could just rely on, oh, there, I dropped something. You could just rely on the um, sidebar to counter rotate you, but I, I usually like to, to um, use a second tensioner to float the side. Um, so we'll go ahead and do that. I just lifted up the sides and now I feel like, for example, this first one has, when I push up on it with the flag, I can see that, I can feel that the spring is pushing down on it. So when I push up, it there's springiness and then it hit, hits a hard stop. So when I ha feel that springiness, um, I could say that that isn't a true gate. So I'll go to the second one, which I've lifted really high and actually I have to, it goes so high that I have to actually lift it up a little bit with the flag using a bit of a pivot. But I can also feel that that one's springy there. Third one, I just pushed it a little bit further and now it has the springy feeling there. So let's check the first one again. Springy feeling, springy, springy. The fourth one. Okay, so this fourth one, when I turn it, it just binds hard. Or does it? Hold on. I might have felt a spring there. Never mind, there's springiness right there. So that one probably set. And the fifth one, okay. This exa example. Yeah. So this one just kind of binds hard. So this one is in a false gate, this 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 fifth pin. So to get it out, you can put a second tensioner in, and that way you can control the specific rotation of the uh, plug. Um, rather than it when you push it, it dropping too far. So Let's go ahead and counter rotate a bit until I can, and I'll probably drop some while I do this. There we go, but I got it up a bit. So let's see what we dropped. First one dropped down. Second one dropped all the way down. Third one didn't, fourth one didn't, fifth one, okay. Go back to the beginning, first one, second one, third one. Okay, and I got a lot of rotation out of the core. So let's see, first one, springy. Second one, springy. Third one, springy. 
fourth one doesn't feel springy yet. Okay, so fourth one doesn't feel set. Fifth one feels set. So what is going on? One, two, three. So the fourth one is um, not set. So I'm going to back off the tension a bit because the fourth one is binding hard, meaning it's in a false gate. All right. Let's see what we got. First one dropped. Second one dropped all the way down. Check the first one again. Okay, second. Third one dropped. Fourth one feels... Okay, I lifted the fourth one. Just hoping I didn't overset it. First one, good. Second, good. Third, just got a little click in. It's good. Fourth one. Fifth one. Okay, so let's see what we got. One is set. Two is set. I check it every time I get a little bit more rotation out of the core because that can make one of these... Uh, really drop into their false gate and let you feel. So now everything feels good except the fifth one, I guess, dropped back down again. So let's go ahead and try to get him back up again. So I set the fourth one, and in the meantime, the fifth one dropped. So with these things, you'll get a lot of this kind of ping pong action. First one good, second one, third one dropped a little, fourth one felt like it dropped a little. Okay, let's check again. First one good. Second one, good. Third one, got a click, good. Fourth one, tiny click, okay. And fifth one. All right, so they all feel good. Double check it again. Double, triple, quadruple check before going on to the next step. So you see I just got a lot of rotation when I touched the third one there. So one, two, three, doesn't feel set. So I'm gonna try to get three to go up a little more. Hopefully without dropping stuff. Because otherwise you can be on oh, sound like something dropped. You can be on these sidebars forever. Okay, second one, first one, second one dropped. Third, fourth. Okay. Check again. One, two, three, four, five. So now adding some tension, going through it again. Two is set. Three is spring, completely springy. So three is not binding at all. Not in any sort of gate. Four is completely springy. And five is going to be our culprit. That means it's probably in between gates. Although five feels like it's in a in a false, uh, in a true gate, sorry. So is it number two, this high guy? No, he's okay. So why am I not getting any binding on three and four? This is always a troublesome thing. That means that something is not in a gate most likely or something's overset and in cases like this I back off a bit drop something down a little so I dropped one and two there one and two three four five okay so I got a little bit of core rotation when I touch five so that probably will make three and four bind is my guess indeed it did when I did three, I got more movement, but I didn't want to. I didn't want to rotate the core more clockwise because I knew number four is going to have to be touched. But I rotated a bit much, so a bit much. So I counter rotated a bit to get four. One, two, three, four, five dropped. Five, four, three. One dropped. One, two dropped. Is a problem. Two's up. One, two. Three dropped a little, four dropped, five didn't drop. And then I just add a little bit more rotation, check through again. Okay, and adding a lot of rotation now. One, two, three, got a click from three, four, a little click from four, and five feels good. So a lot of a lot of tension now. One, two, a little click when I got a lot of rotation when I touch three, and I think we're set now. So just a ton of tension. One is a little bit springy, two a little bit springy. I do a lot of tension because then the the false gates will bind really hard, and they're all good. So now that they're all set, we're going to go to the top, and that took a long time. Okay, so your know, your time varies on there. So now what we're going to do is going to start attacking these top. 
And we're just jiggle testing. Number five, I think that is, or six. They all feel jiggly. Actually, I don't know why I'm using this. I kind of need a deeper hook for this, I think, so I can get on each pin individually. Okay, six, five, four jiggles. Okay, three's not jiggling. All right, I gotta click out a three. So three, I was able to just kind of bully up uh, out of its counter milling. That could be because the lock is worn or something like that. Uh, two's a, might be a little bit jiggle. For the front one, I'm gonna go off the right warding here because it's so high up. And that one is not jiggling at all. So what I'll do is I'll let go of the tension some while I bounce on one. So I'm letting go of tension, letting go of tension, letting the core counter rotate a little while I keep uh, pushing up on one until it gets in like that. Check for jiggle. I don't feel it, so I guess it didn't quite in. There we go. You saw the, hopefully you saw the plug rotate some. Check for jiggle. I do it with my thumb because it's so high and I can see it jiggling some. I'll go back and see if three still set. Indeed, jiggle there. Two, no jiggle. See that? Nothing. So that means that we got set up number two. So I'm gonna let go of, I'm gonna bounce it while I let go of tension. And it could be that I drop other pins. That can happen a lot here. So two just went up. And now I can't, it's hard to show, but two is jiggling. Okay, double check one didn't drop. One's still jiggling. Double check three didn't drop. Three's jiggling. Four is jiggling. Let's see I get the other deeper hook for the back ones. It's hard to locate five, uh, six sometimes. So I'll start with uh, four, which is jiggling. Five is not jiggling at all. And six, I think is jiggling some. So we'll go after five. And just because those are jiggling doesn't mean that they're set. It could just mean that they're not, it's not their turn. So five wasn't moving, but once I set five, it could be that we get a little bit more rotation and four and six will be more in their, in their, uh, in the milling, touching it, uh, touching the edges of the counter milling more. So I just set five, I wanna say, cause it's jiggling. Check six. Now jig six is no longer jiggling. Check four. Four still jiggling some, so it must be six next. Let's hope that I'm on six. As I let off the tension, I can get jiggling out of it. As it works its way, it gets more freedom to move in the counter milling until I get to the point where I can get it out. I got it out, but I think probably something else dropped while I did that. So let's double check our more frontal pins. One is not jiggling anymore, so I lost one doing that. So let's reset one. And you could be back and forth quite a few times. You might want to do this. I just dropped a bunch. One I was just about to say, you might want to do this with a uh, float picking so you get a little bit more control. So you don't do something like that. Um, let's get out this hook so I can get on single pins better. Let's get this one after all, the hook one. Checking number two. Got some jiggle there. Go to the back again, probably drop, drop some stuff back here again. A lot of back and forth. Don't get discouraged by dropping pins. Four, five. Normally I might go a bit slower than this, but I'm trying to beat the clock because I only have half an hour to pick and gut. Number one's jiggle. Number two, jiggle. Number three, jiggle. Number four, jiggle. Five, six, no jiggles. So six, I didn't manage to get it set after all that. So maybe what we do is we'll go ahead and show a float on number six to get us a little bit more control. 
There we go. You can hear it's moving now. And I'll go front to back on it and try to get that pin to go up into the wording. I thought I got it, but no, it's still not jiggling. I'll do it again. There. Now I got it. Definitely jiggling. Five. Four, now binding. Can hear it move more and more as I let off the tension, uh, let off the, or counter rotate the t um, the plug. Got four in, and we got an open. So you see, it's just constantly jiggling and, and finding uh, the next binder. So now that we have the open, let's take a look inside. We'll zoom out. Okay. Move that out the way. Alright, so two screws on the back, lock her back up. Take those off. Keep. So we'll turn it that way. We'll get a follower. Now you could gut this through the this top plate too if you want, um, but conventional gutting works fine. Here's the sidebar. This di dictates um, how you move those side pins up and down. These cuts are what determine how high you have to do it. So all the pins are the same, but they get lifted to different heights based on the sidebar. This one you can't really see very well because it's a bottom cut. You see that? So sidebar on there. It's got two sidebar springs, one and two. Come on. And then I guess we'll take out some top pins. One, two, three, can't. Six, five, four, three, two, oops, two, and one. So there's all the <coughs> sidebar springs. I mean, sorry. The key pins, I can't talk very well right now. Um, and now we'll take out the tops. I haven't looked at these tops yet, so this will be curious. Hopefully they're all gins. Okay, number one, gin. Um, the springs are all the same, but there's the spring for that. Number two, I don't know if I can show, show you as it comes out. You can see, hopefully you can see there. The gin should be facing with the, the spool pointing towards the keyway, the key pins. If you do it upside down, they're all gonna act like standard pins and you won't have as much fun from the lock. It'll be too easy. There's number two, three. Oops, don't lose that. All right, that fell onto my chair. I'll have to find that in a second. Number four. Maybe we'll take the last two from the back. <clears throat> Six. And a number five right there. Okay. Oops. Let's see if I can get the one. So nothing special in here. Now, without the pressure of the springs pushing in it, the, uh, against it, the top bar just fell off. Let's see if I can get this uh, spring from my lap. Oh, maybe not. Okay, I'll find that later. I have a nice little magnetic sweeper. So spring three, I have to remember to find. Then these bottom pins, they're all the same, but basically make sure you don't let them fly. Five, whatever one, I, one, just grabbing whichever one I can get my fingers on. Three, two. So each of these has, um, like we felt in there, we felt false gates. So these serrations here are the false gates, like that. And then the deep one here is your true gate, and that's what the sidebar drops into. And then each of these has a small spring, like this. Four, five, like 
like that. And then the <coughs> the plug itself, uh, this is a little sharper than I'd like to use, has like um, one deep piece of counter milling. It looks like it's in chambers one, two, four, five, six. And that's why three, I was able to just push up pretty easily because it wasn't catching in counter milling. I was able to just push on it. I didn't have to counter rotate. I don't know if you remember it. I just, that was the first one I just shoved up. And that's because the only thing I'm dealing with is it acts like a normal spool where the spool will counter rotate it. Whereas on these other ones, it gets caught and you can't push it without manually counter rotating the, um, the plug, either by using this, the sidebar to force it back or using that second tensioner to force it back. Um, so there's that. Let's take a closer look at our pins. There's our pins. Yeah, this is spring three I gotta pick up in a minute. So just standard key pins, gin bottle drivers, and then these um, 6K um, side pins. And then your sidebar. Anyways, that's the Acid Twin 6000 with gin spool drivers. Thanks.